All right, I'm going to have a go at the Guardian's Everyman crossword for Sunday, February 4th. I did have a look uh, before I started recording at this one. One across supports our declines to intervene. And I thought, oh, it's some phrase that means two pretty much opposite things. And um, I came up with stands by. So if you just, if you stand by somebody, you support them. But if you just stand by, you're, you don't want to get involved. All right, that gives us some uh, initial letters. Always good to get. Break away from some predecessors. Being revolutionary. So I think it's going to be maybe a word for predecessors that is put backwards, which would explain why it begins with an S, because your predecessors, plural, will end in an S. But break away, I mean, it could be taking a break away, like a holiday, or it could be to uh, split something, to... Oh, but what would some predecessors be? Ancestors, forebears... Oh, or could it be... Maybe it's a hidden clue and then reversed. Yes, in fact, it is. All right. Uh, so starting at the first S in predecessors and working backwards, we have secede to break away from. Wonderful. One coin per person. So I think the first one is that A, and then a coin, which could be a P. Um, could be an old D for the old penny. And then per could be some, actually could be another A, as I learned recently. You know, something ahead can be per head. Uh, so, but person, oh, I'm not getting a six letter word for person. Nope. Uh, Sam and every man, and of course, every man is referring to himself or herself, cover up problems. Um, I'm wondering about dilemmas. Uh, let's put it in. I can just see that we do have Sam backwards, uh, and then we have me for every man and lid for a cover, and all of that goes up to make problems. Report by young fellow. Is he perhaps from South Asia? Well, S Asia. 11. Uh, the first thing I thought with report, it can be, it can mean a, a loud noise. And I thought of bang. Oops, uh, bang. And then I'm thinking of Bangalore. But do you call a person? Oh, yeah, Bangalorean. But now I'm wondering Bangladeshi, because there we have lad. So bang, lad. And then is he perhaps is an anagram of is he. And we got Bangladeshi. Did we have that before? It seems familiar. All right, let's, uh, we're making good progress in the top left. Relaxing, question mark, and in quotes, T 
terrifying exclamation. So I presume it's a double definition, but one of the definitions, I presume, is a bit of a stretch, the relaxing one. And terrifying. I presume it's going to end in ing. Terrifying. Oh, that should be pretty straightforward with the C and the L. Oh, chilling, of course. If you're just chilling, you're relaxing. Actually, it's not as much of a stretch other than it's slang, I suppose. American shivering with cold. Time, 10.35. What are we supposed to do with the 10.35? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. But we do have a D, an M, and an L. So I'm thinking we're going to anagram at least part of it. Uh, so it's 15 letters with cold time is 12. I can see that we might have to shiver. And does it mean an African? Oh, no, I'm thinking just because of what word would fit in there. Uh, decimal. Decimal. Decimal something. So then I think, yeah, I think the 1035 is referring to not decimal places. But why 1035? Could it be something to do with 10 across? No, I'm not sure. All right, how are we doing with one coin? per person. Oh, per person is a piece. And I presume then a coin is just simply a piece. Hmm, okay. I'm going to have to come back to 11 across. Let's try the northeast gives a place to grad MIT spellbound to some extent. Okay, another hidden clue. Admits. And again, gives us some starting letters. What the Cohen brothers do is straightforward. Well, they write and they direct. And direct is straightforward. Accounts consisting of utterances. Accounts, of course, could be somebody relating an account of something, or it could be in a financial sense. No, unwisely realigns. So I think it's going to be an anagram of unwisely with U.S. author. I'm not seeing the anagram immediately. U.S. author. Having a W and a Y. It's interesting, uh, fodder, I think, is the word for the letters that go into an anagram. Uh, let's try the anagram helper, see if it suggests something. No. No, 
how about you? Are you spotting it where I cannot? U.S. author. No, I'm going to give up on that one. Let's try and get some uh, additional letters. Oh, this was the weighty and large stones. Is it simply a double definition? Or is it um, something for large? Stones? Well, stone can be S, as in he weighs so many stone, but could it then end with two S's because of its plural? Weighty and large. No, not getting it. Um... Let's see. What's found in first aid kit, in part, swab and a gel. Well, I'm wondering if it was another hidden clue, but there's an awful lot of verbiage. I mean, there's an A and a D, but then it would start T-A-I-D. I don't think that's right. Tade kit, no. In part, swab and a gel. So maybe it is something that's found in a first aid kit. Oh! It is a hidden clue, but it's down here. I, I completely miss the D and and. I think just our eyes, we just read and as one little single thing and go over it. So it's, of course, a bandage. My goodness. All right. Urchins having sport largely in itinerant funfairs. So I think it's going to be an anagram of urchins having, but then it says large because that's too many letters. Or maybe it's urchins hmm, in sport. We should be able to come up with a word. I think itinerant funfairs is going to be the definition. Carnivals. Um, no, maybe it's an archaic word. Bagatelles. No. All right. Reportedly deserves coffee in large quantities here, so I presume a homophone. Reportedly, maybe it's a word that sounds like deserves, um, and you get coffee in large quantities here, so somewhere that produces coffee. Um, deserves. What's another word for deserves? Earn? Oh, earns. <laughs> yes. And you find coffee in large quantities in urns. Oh, my goodness. Uh, oh, I didn't look at 14. I and others are are used to be. So I and others would be we, and we are we're, but then used to be were. Okay, I think that's fairly straightforward. 
be good to get this one. Lays open the topics. Um, so I'm thinking for topics, subjects, and then that could also be subjects. Does that mean to lay open, to subject someone to something? Possibly. This J is going to tell us, I think. Patient type is fast at work. Case bringing professional pride. Well, that's certainly, with the, especially with the J, sounds like job satisfaction is going to be the professional pride. Oh, patient type is Job. Um, is fast at, I think, is, um, is anagrammed. So I think it's just S-A-T-I-S-F is, is fast. Um, and a case, a legal case, is an action. And then that gives us, yeah, job satisfaction. Somewhat nastier, overprivileging, bluer blood. Uh, as soon as I start to read these ones that go on a bit, you know, you can see this one is four lines of text. I start to think, oh, it's going to be the initial letters. Um, and so then it's not a surprise to see uh, primarily, so uh, snobbier meets the definition of those words that we take the first letter from. All right, let's try. Star is earnest, did you say? I think it might be a homophone of a word for earnest. And it's going to be, ah, yes, uh, serious. Are you? You can't be serious. Peninsula, wrong answer. Ah, so Crimea is the peninsula. A crime is a wrong, and A for answer. Golden Gate, first cake. Um, I want to say it's Gateau. Yeah, so it is, uh, gold is A-U, and gate goes first, and it's actually a piece of cake. Yeah, that, that one is a little too easy, but uh, I suppose because the golden gate, they wanted to put in the actual word gate as opposed to using a, a synonym. All right, meal prepared with headless fish for Abraham's son. Abraham's son was um, Isaac, right? I thought, where he goes to sacrifice him. But seven letters, so am I misremembering? Because it sounds like we're going to have maybe an anagram of meal and then some kind of fish without its head. Or it could it be another Abraham? Um, Abraham's Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln's son, of course, died young. Could it be, but I can't remember his name. No. No. Ah, uh, maybe this is, um, I just thought of a word for urchins, which is raga muffins. Having sport, largely. So uh, I think we have game, which is sport, largely. In itinerant... 
Ah, in an anagram of funfairs. Oh my goodness, that's clever anagram indicator, itinerant. And I think it's a very fair one. Um, all right, now. Oh, could it be Ishmael? So the headless fish is ish, and then as I thought, an anagram of meal. I'm going to pause and check who Ishmael was. Yes, Ishmael was the firstborn son of Abraham. My goodness, I didn't realize Abraham had so many children. I suppose no wonder he could afford to sacrifice. Oh, I'm kidding. Um, all right, removes crusted matter from stinking sled case. Removes crusted matter. So, oh, um, I'm thinking D scales, uh, which is an anagram of sled case, I think. All right. Um, plaiting twists. Some youngsters talk this way. Um, I presume it's an anagram of plaiting. And it's something about how some youngsters talk. And I thought it might be um, something lingo. Let's try our anagram helper and hope it actually helps. Pig Latin. Ah. Do kids still speak Pig Latin? I remember reading about it in a book when I was a kid, and I think I tried to get my brother to start talking Pig Latin with me, but he was younger, or sorry, older and wiser, and so he didn't want to have anything to do with that foolishness. Can't say I blame him. All right, without changes, Benedict's regularly failing in my view. Well, that certainly sounds like as I see it. Without changes, Benedict's regularly failing. So I presume we take regular letters. I see E E I T. Oh, without changes is as is, and then the E E I T comes regularly from Benedict, with the other letters failing or being removed. Alrighty. Circus venues, not quiet. Audience finally seeing Piggy. Ah, circus venue would be the big top, but not quiet. We remove the P for piano. But we put in the final letter of audience, the E, and we get the big toe. Uh, I suppose from this little piggy went to market. All right. Allow granny to hang loose. Uh, allow. Huh. I need to hang loose. So I wonder if Nan is going to be in there. What other um, Nana? Um, but allow Granny. Then to hang loose. I don't, I'm not even seeing a six letter word that fits those letters. 
Um, I'm fairly confident about the crossing letters. I'm going to pause and uh, rehydrate and think about that one. Uh, yeah, I, I was thinking, oh, what if we... First of all, I thought A-N, but then I thought, oh, it could be a U-N. Um, and then I realized it's, it's really just a cryptic definition. A granny is a type of knot, but if you allow it to hang loose, then you're unknotting it. So I don't think there's any wordplay in that unless I'm missing something. All right, just the top right to go. Let's try to get our um, African shivering with cold time. Ah, so I think it is an anagram of African which is seven letters with cold time, which is eight. And so a decimal fraction, I think, accounts for all the letters. Now, uh, let's try accounts consisting of utterances. I presume it's going to end in S, since both of these are plural. No. Um, let's think now about this U.S. author. I'm going to pause and write this down on paper and see if I can work it out. Oh, well, I was really not making any headway with anagramming unwisely. And then, oh, wait a minute, maybe it's an anagram of real lines, and then saw Salinger, Catcher in the Rye, etc. Oh, my goodness. All right, now Weighty and Large Stones ends with L, which is not what I was expecting. Ah, so I think it's a word for weighty, followed by L for large, and it means stones but it doesn't end in s oh that doesn't um seem very likely but let me pause and think about that one ah oh, of course a uh, grave is weighty and uh, l is large and gravel is made up of stones oh that gives us a nice v Oh, but um, get rid of the S just in case that's not right. Utterances must begin with I N. Accounts. Oh, invoices. Ah, uh, yes. Well, I'm not sure if I think invoices are really accounts, but maybe they are. Uh, and consisting of utterances means you'll find it in voices. All right, not too bad today. I think it was pretty easy for the most part, just a few that uh, tripped me up. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching and have a great day.